Hello and welcome to the latest episode of the Low Budget Review Show. I am your host, Eric Smith, and today I'm talking about Bullet Train Whoops, by Kotaro Isaka. I apologize for uh, possibly butchering that name. But Bullet Train, and this is from Overlook. There you go, Overlook. Uh, I picked this up because I heard good things, and it is uh, soon to be, as of this recording, uh, soon to be released as a major motion picture starring Brad Pitt, which looks over the top and crazy. And so I decided to read this. I wanted to read it before the movie came out. <sighs> My nutshell. It's going to be difficult. So I'm going to look at the flap, the inside flap. I figure if it's there... I can talk about it, not going to consider it a spoiler. So I just want to check what is on here. Uh, see, I don't want to mention that part. So, let's see. And and I'm going to avoid as many Japanese things as I can, because again, I don't want to butcher things. So a lot of people have nicknames. I'm going to use those. Some people, we only know by their nicknames. Uh, but, okay, so from the flap, I can tell you that. I believe our first character is Kimura. He does not have a nickname. And he wants revenge. Someone has put his son in a coma. He gets on the bullet train because he has heard that person is on the bullet train. And he has gone there to kill them. And then, at the same time, we have a, an operative called the, uh, well, no, let's go with uh, Tangerine and Lemon. These are two bad guys. Basically, everybody in this book is a bad guy. Uh, Tangerine and Lemon are a couple of bad guys. They're called the twins, even though they're not related, but they look similar, and they pretty much always work together. They were hired to uh, take a ransom to pay for the kidnapped son of this huge, huge bad guy. Mafia boss, for lack of a better way to put it. Uh, but yeah, their priorities are bring the son back alive, bring the money back, kill everybody. So they've done that, and they are on the train with the mafia guy's son and the suitcase of money returning both of those things on the bullet train. Then we have Ladybug, who has just horrible bad luck, and he's been hired to steal the suitcase full of the ransom money. And then we have this character called the Prince, who is just a sociopath or psychopath, whichever one. Now, I said most of the characters here are bad guys. And so you might say, hey, they're all sociopaths or psychopaths. They kill people. They do these horrible things. But <laughs> for for a, a bit of scale, um, the people like Tangerine and Lemon, Ladybug, uh, some of the other characters, they do what they do for money. It's their job. They don't do it because they like it, you know, they're not getting some crazy thrill out of it, uh, they're doing it because it's their job, yes, it's a horrible job, they're doing horrible things, but they're doing it because that's what they're paid to do, and so they do their job, whereas the prince does horrible, horrible, horrible things simply because he can, he wants to see what he can get away with, he wants to see uh, how far he can go, he wants to manipulate people. He wants to prove his superiority. He's just the worst. Uh, so all of these people are on the bullet train and more. And it is, it's <laughs> the term co uh, comedy of errors comes to mind. Uh, and there are some lighthearted things going on in the book. Uh, but there's, it's just, you know, people crossing paths and the suitcase it's one of those where like the suitcase is here but now it's here and 
I you had it, but now it's gone. But I thought they had it, but someone else has it. So there's that kind of thing going on. I don't think I'm giving any like major spoilers away here, hopefully. Um, so there's so many twists and turns. And then there's some like incredibly dark moments. There's violence. There's plenty of violence in this book. And to, to balance out the lighthearted stuff, like Lemon of Tangerine and Lemon, the twins, is obsessed with Thomas and Friends. Uh, which I thought the show was called Thomas the Tank Engine, but apparently that's just the name of the character. The show itself is actually just called Thomas and Friends, but Lemon is obsessed with Thomas and Friends, and he just keeps talking about it. He's got stickers, and so he's kind of, he's a very fun, again, he's he's violent. He's he's killed plenty of people, um, but he's a fun character, and the, the dynamic between Tangerine and Lemon is a lot of fun. Uh, Ladybug has a handler named Maria who he's always on the phone with, and I love their dynamic. There's a lot of fun going on there, and, and uh, Ladybug is just, again, this sort of sad sack because of his, his perpetual bad luck. And then Kimura is just, there's a lot of flashbacks with Kimura and how things led up to his son being in a coma and him ending up on the train to get revenge. His story does not have a lot of laughs. <laughs> um, excuse me. So, of course, this is translated um, somewhere in here, it should tell me. Translated from the Japanese by Sam Melissa. Melissa? Not sure, but so it was originally in Japanese. Uh, translated to English, and all right. I gave it five out of five on Goodreads because that's as high as I can go. Six out of five is what I'm giving this book. Again, the laws of mathematics and numbers be damned. Six out of five. This book was incredible. I did not want to put it down. It just starts. And it moves like a bullet train. Ah, um, just fantastic. The action, the characters, the writing, the twists and the turns and the just amazing. There's a, uh, the author has a book coming out soon. His newest book is coming out soon. And it's kind of a companion piece from what I can tell. There's a character in this book, just sort of a secondary character wanders in and out of things and he mentions something that happened to him in the past and I believe the new book is that story it's already on my wish list I am buying it as soon as it comes out um, I looked on Amazon for more by this author so I found that book it's called Three Assassins um, and then everything else seemed to be in Japanese couldn't even read what the titles were because uh, I would love to read more by this guy. This book was so, so good. Uh, put me in mind of uh, Dwayne Swarzynski's Charlie Hardy trilogy, simply because of the, the, the characters and the action and some of the over-the-topness. Uh, there's just some crazy, crazy things that happen. Uh, there are some scenes that take place off the train. Uh, so one of the cool things is... Here, I'll just show you. Hopefully, you can see this. So, the first chapter is Kimura. And this is showing all the cars of the bullet train. And the highlighted, or darkened cars, whatever you want to call them, are the cars that that, that chapter takes place in. So, Kimura gets on one of those cars and walks through the other cars. So, every chapter that takes place on the train is like that. It'll show you the cars that the action is taking place in. And then there are a few chapters with a character, Morning Glory, uh, that take place off the train. And so none of the train cars, it's still there, but none of them are highlighted or darkened, whichever you want to call it. Uh, so we know that it's, well, I mean, as soon as you start reading, you know it's off the train because he's doing other things. Uh, but of course, that's going to tie in. Um, so many surprises. Holy cow. So, so good. I can't recommend this enough. If you're a fan of thrillers, 
action. Uh, there's a little bit of mystery to it. There's some sort of mysterious characters. You don't necessarily know who certain people really are or how they're going to fit in. But really, not that much of a mystery. Um, but there's a slight element to it. It's mainly just breakneck paced thriller. So, so good. Just, I, I, and I would say if you, if you have the time, you know what? We're going to do this live. I'm grabbing my phone. I'm hitting Google. I'm checking. Uh, let's see. Bullet train release date. Let us see. August 5th. Well, you know what's going to happen? It's a little late in the review for me to be saying this, but I'm going to bump this up. I want this review out. I don't like to do this because uh, I'm pushing back other reviews that I've already recorded. But I, I want this review out before the movie comes out. And uh, this is... Yeah, it's going to have to be the next review I post. Otherwise, it'll get posted the day the movie comes out. Um... Not that it matters, but I was because I was going to say, if you have time, pick it up, read it before the movie comes out. Although, I mean, you can go see the movie anytime you want, I assume, or wait for it to be on streaming or whatever. So there's really no pressure, but you should just pick it up and read it. So, so good. Um, I, yeah, I really want to see the movie. Working 55 hours next week. Or at the time you watch this, it'll be this week. Have to work on Saturday, but I may get... So I'm not going to see it Thursday or Friday night. So there's no way I can stay up that late and still get up in the morning for work. But I might get a ticket for Saturday and go see it immediately after work on Saturday. Because I'm only working five hours on Saturday. You don't care about any of this stuff. I'm just so excited. Uh, the trailers for the movie... There's some similar stuff to the book, you know, a lot, but there's also, it looks like there's more action-y set pieces in the movie. Um, so, and I'm, you know, if the movie's entertaining and keeps the heart of the book, I guess, then, uh, you know, I'm not going to complain. But anyway, all right, I'm getting way off track. Bullet Train, Kotaro, Asaka, Isaka. Forgive me for mispronoun any mispronunciations. Six out of five. And there's a ladybug. Uh, so, so good. Pick it up. Read it. If you like this kind of thing. You know, I'm not saying if you only read westerns, you should forget your westerns and read the... No, you know what I'm saying. But it's so good. So, so good. There you go. Um... All right. Uh, do I have a question? Yeah, I have a question for this video. When there is a movie based on a book coming out, do you prefer to read the book first before you see the movie? Uh, do you see the movie before you read the book? Or do you not care either way? I prefer, if I'm aware... I prefer to read the book first. Now, there's been plenty of cases back pre-internet when I would see a movie not knowing it was based on a book. First thing that comes to mind is Manhunter. When I saw Manhunter in the theater opening weekend, I immediately went and looked at the movie poster, saw that it was based on the book Red Dragon by Thomas Harris, and went to the bookstore and bought the book and then read it. Um, but then, of course, when Hannibal, or not Hannibal, excuse me, ugh, uh, Silence of the Lambs, when the book came out, I made sure I got that and read it before the movie came out. Um, so given the chance, given the knowledge, I prefer to read the book before the movie. That's why I haven't seen the movie Doctor Sleep yet, because I haven't read the book yet. Uh, that's, well, Paul Tremblay's Cabin at the End of the Woods, I think is the name of it is uh, being made into a movie by M. Night Shyamalan. I think that's the book. 
uh, and I bought it. Uh, it's one that I didn't have, haven't read yet. I bought it for two reasons immediately, finding out that it was being made into a movie. One, so that I could read it before the movie came out, and two, because regular viewers should know by now, I hate movie covers, and I hate when they put that big circle on the cover that says, you know, soon to be a major motion picture or whatever. See, I don't mind that. It's relatively subtle. It's when they put a big yellow circle somewhere on the cover. Um, it's the reason I don't have Bird Box, the book. Because I waited too long, and now every cover that I can find either has Sandra Bullock's face on it, or has a big circle that says soon to be a Netflix motion picture. If I can't find one without that stuff, I'm going to have to break down. I'll get the one with the circle before I get the movie cover. But anyway, uh, so that's why I bought the Paul Tremblay book. For those two reasons. One, make sure I got it before there was a movie cover or anything. But two, so I could read it before the movie came out. That's my preference. Doesn't always happen. And again, I don't always know. I might see a movie and not know. And if, it's, if I like it, then I'm going to go and get the book. But... What do you do? Do you care one way or the other? Do you prefer to read the book first, see the movie first, or is it just a coin flip? Do you not care either way? Let me know in the comments below. And comments are, if you, that's it, if you have any comments, questions, or corrections, please put those in the comments below. Comments are open for spoilers. Just post a spoiler warning. We try to be polite here at the Low Budget Review Show, but don't ask for any spoilers for Bullet Train. You just got to read it. Got to read it for yourself. Uh, if you care to follow me on other social media, my Twitter is at Ronan5757. My Instagram, where I post pictures of books, comic books, board games, and fuzzy animals, is Eric Smith 5757 That's Eric with a K. E-R-I-K-S-M-I-T-H-5757. That's all I have for you. This has been the Low Budget Review Show. I have been Eric Smith, and until next time, Read more books.